Today I'm going to be taking a look at Lubuntu 1810, Cosmic Cuttlefish. Lubuntu 1810 ships with the LXQt desktop environment, which is a change from past versions of Lubuntu which shipped with the LXDE desktop environment. So a pretty big change now, switching desktop environments. It's also a big change for Lubuntu with 18.10. They have switched from using the Ubiquity installer to using the Calamares installer. So today I'm going to download the ISO. I'm going to install this inside a virtual machine. I'm going to be using VirtualBox today. Let's get started. So just briefly, for those of you looking to download Lubuntu 18.10, Lubuntu apparently has two websites. I'm actually not really sure which is the official website. Uh, we have Lubuntu.net. Now, I have been familiar with Lubuntu.net forever uh, since, you know, I first started using uh, Ubuntu and Lubuntu 10 years ago or so. So Lubuntu.net is a website you can go to. Also, there is Lubuntu.me. So I'm not exactly sure, you know, whether Lubuntu.me here is the official Lubuntu website or Lubuntu.net. Both of them have download tabs. Uh, you click download on either page and you should be able to get the latest desktop edition for 1810 Cosmic Cuttlefish. I'm going to download the 64-bit ISO. It is 1.6 gigs in size. That is a pretty large ISO actually for what many consider to be kind of a minimal you know, distribution, Lubuntu. It's designed mainly for older machines. That's kind of how it became famous is because LXDE and now LXQt, those desktop environments can run on some pretty ancient hardware. Machines that are 10, 12, even 15 years old in some cases, a lot of times have no problem running something like the LXQt desktop environment where they would never be able to run some, uh, more modern desktop environments like GNOME or KDE Plasma. So let me get my uh, ISO downloaded and get the virtual machine set up. Okay, so... I've created a virtual machine here. I've gave this virtual machine two cores of my six core CPU. I've given this VM four gigs of RAM to use. So when you first boot into Lubuntu 18.10, of course we have to choose a language here. Let me get the, let me get the virtual machine to capture my keyboard and mouse. Okay, I'm gonna select English as my language. Now we have the options of start Lubuntu, check disk for defects, test memory, or boot from the first hard disk. Uh, start Lubuntu is what I'm going to select here. This should load us directly into the live desktop environment, which in 18.10 should be the LXQt desktop environment. This may take a minute or two. Again, we're booting directly off the ISO, so this isn't, you know, an installed Lubuntu yet. So this was the same as booting off a live USB stick or booting off a live DVD. Sometimes, again, it can take a minute or two to get to the live environment. All right, and we are in the live environment. And right here on the desktop of the live environment, we have install Lubuntu 18.10. We have an icon. I'm going to click on that. This, this should launch the installer. It does. Again, this is the Calamares installer now, no longer using the Ubiquity installer. Now, the difference between Ubiquity and Calamares, both are fine installers. I've used both installers a million times in various distros. The only thing about the change for Lubuntu is Ubiquity had the options of the installer for doing things like downloading updates, you know, while you're installing and ins installing third-party codecs and... There was also an option in the Ubiquity installer here in recent versions of allowing for a minimal install or a full install if, you know, that particular Ubuntu flavor wanted to do that. I'm not sure if they can do that in the Calamaris installer or not. So those options may or may not be here. But other, but other than that, as far as actually installing a distro, Calamaris works fine. Ubiquity worked fine. So the welcome screen is asking about the language. American English is the language. Time zone has been correctly chosen for us. Central time zone in the U.S. English U.S. is the keyboard layout. That's correct. Partitioning. I'm going to choose erase disk and give Lubuntu 18.10 the entire virtual hard drive of this virtual machine. If I wanted to do something else, you know, manually partition the drives, I could choose manual partitioning. But again, I'm just going to let Lubuntu have the whole disk and do its own 
uh, automatic partitioning. And then we need to create our username. I'm going to create the username DT. Then I need to create a password for the user DT, a strong and complicated password. Confirm that strong and complicated fast password. All right, then we have the option of logging in automatically without asking for the password. I don't like ticking that on. I want to be asked for a password to log into my machines for privacy reasons. Click Next. We have our summary location. Looks good. Keyboard. Looks good. Partition scheme. Looks good. Click Install. It warns us it's about to format the drive and write to the disk. So click Install now. And away we go. Usually this portion of the install takes 5 to 10 minutes on you know most machines. So I'll be back in a few minutes with a freshly installed Lubuntu 18.10. And the install has completed. That was very fast, under 10 minutes probably. Now, as always, when you install a new operating system, you always have to reboot the machine to complete the installation. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to click Done. Well, first you need to make sure Restart Now is ticked on. It is ticked on. Then click Done, and your machine should automatically reboot. And I have rebooted my freshly installed Lubuntu 18.10 Cosmic Cuttlefish. Let's see how long it takes to get to a login manager. Okay, boot up time, very, very fast. One thing to note is the login manager. I'm not certain what login manager they're using. This doesn't appear to be LightDM. If it is LightDM, it's the ugliest LightDM theme I've ever seen. <laughs> so, all right, our user is DT. Let's log in. And we should log in to the LXQt desktop environment. Okay. Is it still waiting to load up, or is there a problem with the wallpaper loading? Everything seems to be working, but the wallpaper didn't, didn't load up. We have our background, a solid color background selected, black. But why is there no wallpaper image? Fill with background only? No, I won't. I want an actual wallpaper. Wallpaper image file. This is grayed out though. I can't can't select a uh, wallpaper to change to. Wonder what's going on here. Looks like if I go to wallpaper mode, it's it's automatically selected to fill with background color only. I I'm sure that's not supposed to be ticked on by default. I don't know why that is. This is the first time of me logging into this since the uh, installation, so I didn't play with the, the wallpaper uh, uh, settings here, so this is strange. Stretch to fit the screen is now the wallpaper mode, and now it would let me search for an image on the system. Um, on most Linux distributions, where you would find the wallpapers would be in your root directory, you go to User, Share, Backgrounds. Is there a Backgrounds folder? Yes, there is. But there are no image files here. So I'm not sure. I may not have any wallpapers <laughs> to choose from. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's why it chose the, just a solid color background. That is strange. That may have been a problem with the installation. It didn't install uh, the, the wallpapers. Because I'm sure Lubuntu is supposed to have some wallpapers with it by default, but I don't think I got any. Hmm. Anyway, I'm searching for the name of the uh, Lubuntu wallpaper pack. Looks like it's Lubuntu-Artwork. Um, I've got a web browser open on my, my host machine, so I'm searching for what the name of the wallpaper pack would be. So let me open up Firefox here in Lubuntu 18.10. Actually, I don't need Firefox. What I really need is a terminal. We'll install these through the terminal. Let me find the terminal. LXQt uses the Qt terminal, the Qt terminal. So I'm going to sudo apt install lubuntu artwork is the name of the package. It says lubuntu artwork is already the newest version. Lubuntu artwork set to manually install. So, okay, where is it putting the wallpapers then? I'm sorry guys, uh, already, I mean, I, I really haven't even started the review, you know, and the install, uh, the install went fine, it's just for some reason I don't know why it didn't set a wallpaper 
This is very strange. It keeps filling the background with just a solid color. I want an image, and I want the image to stretch to fill the entire screen. Then we need to find where the wallpapers are installed. The Lubuntu artwork package already exists on the system. I'm just not sure where it puts those wallpapers. And like I said, in most Linux distributions, it's user, share, background. So I went to user, share, backgrounds is empty. So I don't need to look there anymore. I would assume it would be in user, share, and then artwork, or actually, let's back up a little bit. Wasn't there a Lubuntu folder? LXQT folder, Lubuntu. Let's check Lubuntu. User, share, Lubuntu, wallpapers. Okay, Lubuntu default wallpaper. Let's check that. Hit apply. And still nothing happens. Okay. That one works. That's very strange. That's very strange. Uh, I hate to be negative, like off, off the top here, but oh well, we got it worked out either way. It's just strange that because a, a brand new to Linux user would have trouble wondering why there's no wallpapers. Do they need, need to install wallpapers? Uh, they would never think that the wallpaper pack is already installed and that they exist somewhere on the system. They, they wouldn't know where to look. Most new users wouldn't know to look in user share backgrounds, or in Lubuntu's case, user share Lubuntu wallpapers. Anyway, let's see what is installed by default here on Lubuntu 1810 Cosmic Cuttlefish. Should be quite a bit because, again, the ISO size is pretty big, 1.6 gigs in size. Uh, they're probably, probably going to be using most, maybe even entirely, Qt apps, Qt apps, because of the LXQt desktop environment. Uh, maybe some KDE apps in here too. KDE fits well with Qt. So accessories, we have Arc. Arc is the uh, archive manager for KDE Plasma. About KDE. Yep. So Arc with a K. About Arc. This is version 18.4.3. So your archive manager is for zip, unzip, tar, gz. You know all those compressed file formats. All right. We have Featherpad for a plain text editor. Featherpad is a very light. Plain text editor, written in Qt, Featherpad 0.9. Also under accessories, we have KCalc, which is the standard calculator in KDE. We have PC Man FM, the Qt version of PC Man FM for our file manager. I love PC Man FM. It's my favorite uh, file manager. It's light, fast, blazing fast. I install PC Man FM as a graphical file manager on all my systems if I'm using things like OpenBox or Fluxbox or Xmonad, Qtile, i3. Also under accessories we have Clipper. Clipper is our clipboard. It's uh, down here in the sys trade. This is probably Clipper down here. Yep, about Clipper. Clipper 5.1.1. I personally have never found too much use for having clipboard apps, but most Linux distributions ship with them by default. Qt Pass is here. This is a password manager written in NQT, of course. I'm going to cancel that. Okay, come on, close it out. All right, also under accessories, we have Vim. <laughs> Vim is, of course, a terminal based text editor. Uh, if you ever accidentally launch Vim, all you need to do is colon Q exclamation point, and it will get rid of Vim for you. All right, under accessories, we have Compton. Now, Compton is the compositor. What is a compositor? Well, when you open a window, you may see that it has some shadowing, uh, some other graphical niceness. Menus may have some, some borders and some shadowing. Uh, a compositor just makes you, you know, all your graphical stuff smoother. And LXQt does not have a compositor built into it, so you have to use like a third-party external compositor. Compton is what they're going with, and Compton is usually what I use when I'm doing minimal window manager only installs like OpenBox, Fluxbox. We also have Noble Note, I guess for a note taking app. Never used that particular program, but if you've seen one note taking app, you've seen them all. Under Education, we have LibreOffice Math. Under Games, we have 2048. Under graphics, we have LX Image for our image viewer. We also have a screenshot utility 
and we also have scan light. Scan light is um, for a scanning. Uh, for those of you that have scanners, that's a scanning utility. Under internet, we have Blue Devil Sin File. I'm not exactly sure what Blue Devil is. Let me open up the Blue Devil Wizard. It's uh, uh, for Bluetooth devices. Okay. Also under internet, we have Firefox, of course, as our default web browser. That is interesting. They went with Firefox rather than a cute web browser, something like Falcon. I don't think most people would want to use one of those alternative uh, browsers, though I think most people expect to have Firefox or Chromium d by default on any real Linux distribution. Uh, so I'm glad they actually ship with Firefox. Firefox Quantum 63.0. All right, also under internet, we have Q Transmission for a BitTorrent client. We have Quassel, which is a IRC chat client. I believe it's a, one of the standard uh, KDE apps. So if I go to About Quassel, Quassel version 0 0.12.5. And I wonder if it would automatically connect us to the Lubuntu IRC channel. No, it doesn't. We would have to just manually um, enter all that in. Not a big deal. Uh, Troita is our email client. That is interesting. Office. We have the entire LibreOffice suite. And I'm pretty sure they are on LibreOffice 6 by now. Pretty sure all the Ubuntu 1810 flavors were using LibreOffice 6. Yeah, LibreOffice 6.1.2.1. This is LibreOffice Writer here. Under sound and video, we have K3B, which is probably the best disk burning utility available in Linux as far as free and open source software. This is KDE's disk burning utility. Fantastic program. I install K3B on all my systems, whether I'm using KDE or not. This is K3B 18.04.3. Also under sound and video, Pulse Audio, Pulse Audio Volume Control is here, and VLC, of course, is here. VLC is just fantastic. VLC 3.0.4. Vetinari, I guess is the code name for that particular version of VLC. Then we have our system tools. Uh, Discover is the software center they're going with. That is interesting. Discover is the software center... Uh, you see that in a lot of uh, Plasma, KDE Plasma distros. I guess they're going to go with that here in Lubuntu as well. Discover has gotten better over the years. You can search uh, by categories. Um, you see it's kind of slow. I mean, it is a graphical uh, software center. These are often kind of slow and, and buggy. <laughs> and usually, if you know exactly what you want to install, you're usually better off just doing it in the command line. It's usually just faster if you can type. Uh, the command line is always the better way to go, but if sometimes, if you're, especially for package or program discovery, you're not exactly sure what you're looking for, then something like a graphical software center makes sense because you know you want a graphic a graphics program, but you're not sure the name of the program or you just want to see what's available. You just go to the graphics category and then you can sit here and scroll through and find one you like. GIMP. Let me install GIMP. I click install, it's going to ask for the root password, I enter the root password, click OK, and it will install GIMP for me. I'm not going to do that here on camera. If I knew a package um, that I wanted, I could also just search for it. I could search for GIMP, hit enter, and it returns GIMP. So well, that is Discover. I've been kind of critical of Discover in the past as far as a uh, graphical software center. It's always been kind of slow and buggy, but it's gotten a lot better in recent versions. HTOP is also installed by default here in Lubuntu. That's great. Let's see what kind of system resource usage we're, uh, we've got going on here. CPU, very low, as expected. We're not really doing anything right now. CPU is hovering around 1-2%. to Pretty standard. Uh, memory. 386 megs of the 4 gigs of memory I gave this system. Uh, under 400 megs is pretty good for a full desktop environment. I mean, we have, you know, a panel. Uh, we have some applets. You know, the sys tray. There's a few things in the sys tray. We're still only running 386 megs. That is very, very nice for, again, a full desktop environment. Also under system tools, we have the Muon package manager. So another graphical package manager. The Muon package manager, though, is similar to something like Synaptic package manager. You know, it's not going to show you like 
screenshots and things you know it's not going to have those kinds of graphical niceness but it is still you search for a package again let's search for GIMP once again since we know it's in the repos you type GIMP hit enter gives you this uh, the results you like that one you click on it you can read the description you can right click on it mark for installation it tells you all the dependencies it's going to install alongside with GIMP hit OK then click apply changes it's going to ask for your root password of course again to install software you always have to enter your root password and then it will install GIMP for you I'm going to cancel that but the Muon package manager also very nice under system tools we have the Qt terminal Qt terminal is of course a terminal written in Qt lightweight multi-platform terminal emulator uh, version 0.90 uh, let's see what kernel we're running while we have a terminal open. So I'm going to do a uname space dash r. We are on kernel 4.18. Close the cute terminal out. And system tools, we have our startup disk creator for creating live USBs. We also have VirtualBox installed by default. Is that actual the actual VirtualBox? Wow, that is. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Well, that might explain why the ISO is a little bigger than normal. I mean, they're including some tools you don't see installed by default uh, very often. And we have QPS also installed here. Not exactly sure what QPS is. Uh, it's a thread uh, process viewer. Kind of kind of similar to something like HTOP or, you know, these other system monitoring programs. So, just another, another uh, alternative. If you don't like HTOP, I guess you could use QPS. Under preferences, we have our, of course, our LX Qt settings. You have the configuration center. Of course, in the LX Qt config center here, everything you see here was also in that menu. So if you go back to preferences and go to LX Qt settings, at the top you have the config center, and then underneath it you have all of this. All of this is also all of this. So you have them in two different spots depending on how you want to take a look at it. While we have the config center open, let's take a look at appearance. See what kind of theming we have. So by default, we are using the arc darker theme, which to be honest, is beautiful. I, I really probably wouldn't change the theming. I love the GTK theme, the arc dark theme. I like the icon set. The blue uh, icons we're using, me personally, I would just roll with this. The widget style is the breeze. QT widget style. Uh, icons. What icon set are they using? Papyrus Dark, it looks like, is the uh, icon set. And I would just stick with that. You do have the options of the default GNOME icon set, which is horrible. The Ubuntu icon set, which is nice, but it's orange. It's not going to fit with the colors here in Lubuntu. Yeah, I would just stick with the defaults, to be honest. The LX Cute theme. Now, this is the LX Cute theme. This was your panel theme, basically. And Lubuntu Arc, Arc is the default, Lubuntu Arc. But you have the options of the Ambience theme, so the Dark theme, that's not bad. The Frost theme, that's very nice. The KDE Plasma theme, now if you want a light theme, that is actually just gorgeous, I think. If I was doing a light theme, and because I have a dark wallpaper, that light panel does work. I could keep that, I would have to change the icons though. We also have a theme called light, and then we have an icon theme or a panel theme called system. You know what? The best one, I really think the KDE Plasma one is just gorgeous. I have to change the icons though. Instead of Papyrus Dark, I need to switch to Papyrus Light. Why? Because Papyrus Dark, you see these icons are too light for the light panel. If I switch over to Papyrus Light, it should change these icons to better icons, more appropriate icons for a light panel. Alright, any other settings I want to play with? I'm not going to play with uh, brightness or monitor or anything. We have the open box settings. Now this is for configuring the window manager. We are actually using the open box window manager here. LXDE and LXQt both use open box as the window manager. When you right click on the desktop you don't get a open box right click menu though but if you would like to get the open box right click menu you would go to desktop preferences go to advanced show menus provided by window manager when desktop is clicked tick that on hit apply now we have open box <laughs> the open box right click menu wow that's actually not bad 
If you guys are looking for a good way to get into OpenBox, just install Lubuntu because you already have the OpenBox window manager installed. There's going to be an OpenBox session installed by default, but you're going to have to configure it. It's not going to be pre-configured for you, so that may be a drawback. You may want something more pre-configured, maybe something like a Bunsen Labs or Arch Labs or something like that. But if you uh, already have your OpenBox config set up, me, I've been a long time OpenBox user, it would be very easy for me to get up and running OpenBox here in Lubuntu. I'm going to tick the OpenBox menu back off and use the standard right click menu, which just has create new folders, paste, you know, the usual suspects in that menu. And close all that out. So, what are my initial thoughts here with Lubuntu 18.10? Now with the LXQt desktop environment, rather than the LXDE desktop environment. Full disclosure, I always love the LXDE desktop environment. It's one of my favorite desktop environments, but it is being replaced. It is being replaced with LXQt. This has been coming for a while. LX, LXDE is really not under development anymore. Everything is moving to the LXQt desktop environment. And for a long time, LXQt has been kind of beta software, but now it has gotten to the point where it's really usable, and that's why Lubuntu has went ahead and made the switch. And I, I've got to tell you, Lubuntu, the suite of software that it includes out of the box, is almost perfect in my opinion. Uh, I really wouldn't change anything about any of the default software included. To be honest, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to depend on your workflow, but for me, uh, I would have no problem with all the default apps that were included by default. The only one I know, like, off the top of my head, I wouldn't use. I wouldn't use Trojita for an email client. I would use Thunderbird. You already installed Fire, Mozilla Firefox. Why not go ahead and put Thunderbird on there? I'm not sure why Lubuntu put Trojita on there, to be honest. I think it's, it's a poor choice. Other than that, everything else about this is solid. It's an attractive distro. Very clean. Very polished. Um... Yes, I had that one little hiccup when I first logged in. For some reason, I didn't have a background image selected, and I'm sure that's a bug. That's not something that should happen. There should be wallpaper when you first log in. I don't know what happened. Uh, again, this is in a virtual machine, but it's strange. After install, you reboot the machine, and I had, you know, a black background instead of a wallpaper. But you know what? That's a minor gripe, and I was able to to get that corrected. But again, if this, if I had been a brand new to Linux user. You know, that might have been more of a pain to figure out than what it was for myself, of course. So, overall, Lubuntu 18.10, how does it compare to other LXQt distros that I've reviewed in the past year? Uh, very, very favorably. <laughs> uh, most LXQt distros are not this well put together, not as polished. They don't include, you know, a really nice suite of software like Lubuntu. This is easily the best LXQt distro I've reviewed on the channel. The only one that comes to mind that I really, really liked as far as a well put together LX, LXQt distro is Redcore Linux, which is a Gentoo based um, distro. And it's a smaller distro, very small development team. Not a lot of people have probably heard of Redcore. Uh, it's actually a very nice distro. Not a lot of mirrors, though. Uh, it's certainly not in the same league as a big distro like Lubuntu, but Lubuntu. I'm telling you, Lubuntu 18.10, they knocked this thing out of the park. Um, this gets an A plus from me. Before I go, this show, this show here, it's made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, David, Leo, Rob, and Tony. They are my highest tiered patrons. These guys, these are the sponsors of the channel. Without them, none of this would be possible. This show is also brought to you by all the fine ladies and gentlemen. You see all those names on the screen? They are the supporters of this channel. Do you enjoy this channel and you're enjoying the content that you're seeing on this channel? Please consider supporting me. You will find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.